Hello, it's Matthew Cassidy speaking and welcome to the first investment update of the financial year. It's that time of the year where companies provide their report card for the last six months and that aggregates for the last 12 months as well. It'll be very interesting to see how companies perform in the current market environment. Obviously, it's been a very buoyant period, um, very prosperous overseas, and the Australian market seems to be battling away. Uh, the past three months in Australia were pretty good for share markets. We were up about 8.5% uh, with both capital and, uh, and dividend accrued. The Aussie market really benefited in the last six or seven weeks of the, the quarter through to the 30th of June due to weakness happening uh, in other parts of the region, in fact. And it's really actually a good example of just how much of a global world we live in uh, to see the effect of uh, what was some pretty heavy selling in emerging markets, particularly in China, uh, through May and June. Uh, the Chinese share market's down over 20% in fact. Uh, and the Aussie market benefited from that in large part because it's seen as the, uh, the most defensive market within the Asian region. Just as a bit of a guide uh, for those investors in, in Asia, or non-Japan Asia as they call it, uh, Chinese shares make up about a third of that index and Australia is the second biggest market with about 17% ahead of Korea. So when things go wrong in China, uh, we've actually ended up being the net beneficiary of that and, uh, and seeing some really pretty strong performance across the board. We're hopeful that Afterpay will have a trading statement uh, literally in the next couple of days. They've had great momentum uh, as a share in the last couple of months, but also too as a business. Uh, remembering that in May they announced the rollout of their US operation and they've had some really good momentum there in terms of signing up new retailers and new customers and only last week they uh, announced a co-promotion with Revolve Clothing uh, which are a very large uh, and well regarded fast fashion uh, retailer um, specifically targeting their millennial cohort. Um, Afterpay's been a great stock. Uh, let's wait and see how it trades into uh, the trading statement because it has been awfully good. But if we do get a pullback, we'd certainly be looking to add two positions there. We've got high hopes for Cube and for Seek and for Downer. These three companies have all got really quite good exposure to the local economy. Uh, both Seek and Downer have upgraded guidance already once this year and we're hopeful that we we'll might see some more upgrades come through. But we've also got some hopes for Cube who have uh, seen a bit of an uptick in momentum in terms of activity and pricing on the wharves and we're still very, uh, very confident about their Moorbank uh, logistics project as well. The economy remains uh, pretty sound. Uh, the industrial economy particularly, employment growth uh, remains, uh, remains pretty positive. And we even had some positive news on the political front in the last month or six weeks with some good reports out on the federal budget situation and in fact uh, tracking a couple of billion dollars ahead of, uh, ahead of anticipated. One negative that continues to come through, and I feel like I mention this uh, every other month, but it is the impact of the Royal Commission and its impact on credit to the local economy. I've flagged up on several occasions how liquidity has been drained from the global economy, uh, no less in Australia where uh, money supply growth is running at recession, 1990s recession levels uh, and, and unlikely to be turning around anytime soon. We've started to see uh, some real world examples of that uh, lack of liquidity hitting the economy. Here in Melbourne we had a very large boutique uh, property development firm uh, going bust. Uh, and we continue to see evidence out of the real estate agent, again I'm using Melbourne as an example, where buyers and sellers are some uh, 10 to 30% uh, away in price terms and clearance rates uh, at the weekend just gone are still in the, uh, the, the mid to low 50% range nationally, which again is about a four or five year low. We're now starting to see a little bit of an impact on business confidence come through. Last month's uh, Nat, uh, National Australia Bank uh, business confidence figures uh, fell for the second month in a row. Uh, again, we're coming off uh, decade highs, but we, interestingly, with the falls we've had, we're now at about an 18 month low in terms of uh, uh, how uh, corporates see the outlook for employment. And employment's been very strong the last couple of years, so that's really starting to turn over. Uh, construction is the third biggest employer uh, nationally, and it's been one of the fastest growing sectors. So if we do start to see a bit of an impact on construction from banks uh, tightening up their lending criteria, uh, we might actually start to see a, a bit of a drift in, in economic momentum sooner than perhaps even I thought. Looking forward to working with you during the year. We believe this year will be in, will be some volatility and we'll need to keep an eye on the ball in relation to where the opportunities will be and there'll certainly be some periods, no doubt, of some higher cash holdings. Thank you very much.